And so I want to encourage you to get uncomfortable, meet new people, step out into the unfamiliar, because that is where you grow. Hey everybody, Chris Bello here. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how you will outgrow people. So you're going to outgrow people. People are going to outgrow you. That's kind of the cycle of life. That's how, or the circle of life. That's how things happen. And I would ask you, which one would you rather do? Would you rather outgrow people or would you rather have them outgrow you? If you're listening to this podcast, I assume, and I think most people would answer this way that they want to be the one outgrowing others, but that's not always the case, right? Some people are not taking action. They're not moving. They're staying stagnant and they're treading water in some cases where they're not growing. And if you're not growing, you're dying, right? I think my friend um, Lilo, I had him on the show, I don't know, 50 plus episodes ago at this point. It's been a couple of years probably, but he said, if you don't evolve, you'll dissolve, right? I thought that was kind of a cool, catchy way of saying it. So both of those things are going to happen. And I'm sure if you're listening to this again, you'd prefer to outgrow your friends and network and peers to just level up. And ideally we all want to level up, but it's like that saying, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. You can't force other people to actually want it more than you want it for them, if that makes sense. So you can only set the example. Maybe they come along with you on their journey and maybe you outgrow them and you have to leave them behind. Personally, I don't want to be left behind and I am chasing the best version of myself. There's an example that I shared on my story recently on Instagram, and you may have seen seen it. If you haven't, you know, make sure to follow me. Chris Bello underscore is my handle on Instagram, but I had a friend. We were best friends in elementary school. I think we became friends in fifth grade. And then, you know, we did band together and lots of sleepovers and BMX bikes and dirt ramp jumps and stuff like that. Right. You know, hanging out at the mall, going to movies, all those little things you do in middle school and in elementary school. And we kind of parted ways in high school. I went to a private school. This guy went to a public school and we didn't really keep in touch. Right. He got in a little bit of trouble and I was in a private school. We had separate friends, separate lives, and we grew apart. We had our own friend circles and all of that. And so a few years went by and he actually somehow got my number, reached out to me and we connected. At this point, I had met my now fiance. She was my girlfriend at the time. And we all met up. I think it was like him and his girlfriend, me and my girlfriend at the time, which is now my fiance, of course, at like a brewery. And it was just kind of weird because after so many years, I think we both kind of had something in our mind of how we it was going to be or how things used used to be, you know, hanging out, watching, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a movie like The Goonies is something that we would watch, you know, uh, at, at his place and then eating breakfast taquitos the next day or making hot dogs or whatever, like the basic stuff that you know how to make. And so I think we thought we were going to kind of pick up from there. And it was just weird because we're both different. We'd all grown apart in a way. We have our own friends. We have different experiences and backgrounds. And again, he had gotten into some trouble and things like that. And I had not, I'd been relatively knock on wood, a good kid. Nothing against like messing up or making mistakes. We all make mistakes, but it just, it was just weird. You know, we didn't have a lot in common and I didn't know what to talk to him about. And we kind of hung out and went our separate ways and that was it. And a couple of days after that, this is the funny part that I posted about on my story. I get a text from him and he was asking me, Hey, there's this crane off of like Montrose in the area of Houston that uh, I was living at. And he asked me if I wanted to go and climb this crane at night at a construction site. And again, this was like maybe three or four years ago. I'm 31 now. So I guess I must've been like 27 or 28 years old. <laughs> and he's not on social media. We're not connected. He doesn't follow me. He doesn't know I have a podcast or anything, right? So in his mind, he probably was remembering the seventh grade version of me, just like in my mind, I was remembering the seventh grade version of him and our experiences and the fun that we used to have and like jumping on the trampoline and all those types of things. But we've grown so apart, but in a way, I think maybe I grew, I outgrew him a bit and maybe he stayed a little bit stagnant or stuck where he was, or I don't know, you know, different different strokes for different folks or whatever, as the saying goes. But I'm like 27 years old. I'm like, dude, I got a full-time job. I am trying to build this podcast. Long story short, I was not going to go break into a construction site and climb a crane and do all that stuff when I'm like usually going to bed by 10, 10 p.m. every night so I can wake up at six. And so it was just kind of funny because he remembered the old version of me. And this happens a lot, right? You could probably think of a few friends or family members in your network, in your life that you've outgrown and maybe a few that have outgrown you where you're just like, gosh, they really got it together. They'll, you know, you may have a memory of them from fifth grade where they were a troublemaker and they were just a little hooligan running around and now they're like a doctor or something, right? They really got it together. They got 4.0 in college, went to medical school, whatever the path is, you can tell who has it together and who actually turned their life around and who's kind of stuck in the same spot. Cough, cough, some of my family members that are like, you know, 30 living at 
at home with mom and dad. You know, you guys know who you are. If you're listening to this, I'm calling you out because uh, it's, it's time to grow up. But let's talk about the crabs in the bucket story. You probably have heard this before where if there are crabs in a bucket, and if you haven't, this is kind of cool and interesting. I, I don't know. I've been paying attention more when I go to like restaurants and they got crabs. I'm like, I want to see the crabs in the bucket thing. But whenever there's a crab trying to escape the bucket, the other crabs will actually pull it down. And our friends and family can sometimes do this because it's safe. This is what's known. You know, they want the best for us. And, oh, you're reaching too high. We don't want you to get hurt. We don't want you to start that business that's going to fail. We're going to pull you back down and just talk you out of it so you can stay here at the comfort zone, right? This base level that we're all familiar with. But in order to get to that next level, you've got to jump out of that bucket, right? You've got to remove yourself from those crabs around you that are trying to pull you down and keep you stuck. And you have to stop allowing people to keep you stuck. Part of this is separating yourself, right? Maybe hanging out with those people less, finding new friend circles. I've been finding a lot through business coaching groups that I'm a part of, through networking events, business events. For example, there's an investor networking event that happens in Denver and they meet up at 7 a.m. on a Saturday once a month or something like that. And it takes commitment. You're only gonna see people who wake up early at 6 a.m. on a Saturday and get to this event at 7 a.m. Those people are gonna be serious. Those people take their business seriously. They've got their priorities in check. They're not out getting drunk the night before. They're going to bed early so they can wake up and make it to this thing in time, right? To network, to put their business cards out there, to maybe get new business versus the people who don't invest in themselves and don't find that important. They're gonna be sleeping in. They're not gonna be paying attention to those types of meetings. And so I wanna encourage you to get them comfortable, meet new people, step out into the unfamiliar because that is where you grow. And if you're an introvert, this may be difficult, but just go up to someone you don't know, not a random person on the sidewalk, but maybe someone at your gym or someone at, you know, your massage center that you go to, or like the recovery place. If you've got like hot tubs and cold tubs and stuff like that, go out there, meet somebody you don't know, just strike up a conversation and you'll be pleasantly surprised. I bet at how many cool people you can meet and how easy it is to just talk to somebody about who they are, what they do, share what you do, how you can work together, you know, maybe mutual connections that you might have and then go from there. So this is just a reminder, you will outgrow people, people will outgrow you, but make sure to focus on being the person, be, be that first person, not the latter. You wanna be the person now growing people, right? Reach that next level, catch the best version of yourself and continue to do that every single day. So that's it for this episode. Thanks for tuning in. I look forward to catching you in the next one. Oh.